Upgrade your next screen replacement using After Effects Beta's 3D animation feature. Okay, for this video, we're gonna be using After Effects Beta because of its 3D animating capabilities. If you don't have it, you could download it from the Creative Cloud desktop app. Once open, we have our clip in a composition. And with our clip selected, we'll right click and go to Track and Stabilize, Track Camera. And while that's analyzing, we could search for our 3D element. I'm gonna open my browser and go to Sketchfab. I'll drop that link below. I'm gonna to look to find an animated low poly style frog for my sequence. I'll download this one and I'll import that GLB file into After Effects and I'll drag it right into my comp. Once imported, I could scale up my object from the model settings box and I'll hide my frog for now. Now we need a background for our phone that matches our 3D model. For this, I'm gonna use Microsoft's Image Generator. And I'm gonna to attempt to get a good screenshot for my background. And this is off to a pretty good start. So this is really what I ended up with after tweaking a little bit. So I'll save this and bring this into After Effects as a composition. And I'll wait to import that into my comp. Now with my video layer selected, I'll jump to Effects and Presets. And I'll drag the key light effect onto my video layer. And I'll jump to Effect Controls, and I'll select Screen Color, and I'll pick the green screen. I'll change this to Screen Matte, and then I'll fine tune a bit. So I'll drop down the Screen Matte Controls, and I'll adjust my Clip Black and Clip White until my screen is fully black and everything else is white. Okay, then I'll change my view back to the final result, and that's looking good. Now with the same layer selected, I'll select my 3D camera tracker, and I'll pick a tracking spot in the screen area. I'll select Create Solid. Now with that solid selected, I'll adjust the parameters a bit, scale it up to cover the screen. Now with my solid still selected, I'll jump to my project panel, and I'll select my screen replacement layer that I made. And while holding Option, I'll drag this layer onto the solid layer, and it will replace the solid. I'm gonna adjust the parameters a little bit more. So I just need to put this layer underneath my video layer so it appears as the phone screen. I'll reveal my frog layer now and select my video layer and I'll go to 3D camera tracker again and I'll pick another point to create a solid. And I'll parent pick whip my frog to my solid holding shift so it matches the location of the solid. I'm gonna adjust the parameters a little bit more. Now if I drop down my frog layer settings, I can go to the animation options and see the built-in animation for this layer. So I'll be using that a few times. To do that, I'll have to enable time remapping. I'll extend my layer and scoot these keyframes forward a bit, and these will be my jumping keyframes. Now animating my position parameters, I'm gonna have my frog move positions while the animation is going. So moving it forward, and selecting the Convert Vertex tool, I'll make this straight line into a curve so it resembles an arc. And I'll also throw in a scale adjustment as he gets to the top of his jump, so it gives some force perspective like he's getting closer to the camera. And when he lands, I'll scale it down a bit. Now I just wanna tweak the orientation so it matches the angle of the table surface. Okay, that jump looks really good. Okay, so now I'll copy these time remap keyframes and paste them right where I want the next jump to happen. So I'll animate this the same. I'll do the same thing with my scale, position, and rotation parameters. And I'll create that nice arc again. And I'll have the frog jump right out of the frame. Okay, it's looking really good. So now I'll add some lighting to it. So now I'll right click and I'll go to new, light, and I'll change this to environment. I'm gonna lower this to about 85. Now I'm gonna isolate my light and my 3D objects just to get a quicker render. So in terms of the lighting in our scene, so if you look at our subject's hands, that's where our light source is coming from. So I'll create a spotlight and give it a little bit of an edge to where the sun is coming from. I'll tweak the orientation a little bit so it looks like it's coming from the bottom of camera left. Now we're gonna go and create a shadow layer. There aren't too many shadows in general in this scene, so it's just really a subtle contact shadow. So to do this, I'm gonna duplicate my frog layer and I'm gonna call this shadow reference. And I'm isolating that, I'll flip it around so it's a reflection of my main frog here. Okay, that looks good. So now for the shadow. Since we can't add effects like drop shadow to 3D layers, we're gonna to have to use a workaround. Let me show you. To do that, I'll add a new solid to my comp. Any color is fine. 
I'll drag the calculations effect to my solid. Under second layer, I'll select my shadow reference layer. I'll bring the second layer opacity to 100. I'll hide my shadow reference layer and my frog layer. Now I could duplicate the effect and under blending mode, I'll select stencil alpha. As you can see, it creates a 2D duplicate of that 3D layer. So now I could use this as my main shadow layer. Now I could add my drop shadow effect to this layer. I'll select shadow only and I'll see how it looks with some of my layers enabled. And I'll lower the opacity and I'll increase the shadow softness. And that's looking really good. Next, I'm gonna make a reflection on this cup. So I'm gonna to go to my main video layer in the effect controls, I'm gonna go back to the 3D camera tracker and I'm gonna create a new solid on the cup. I'll tweak the position a little bit. Now under the solid settings and under geometry options, I'll tweak the curvature to match the curve of the cup. And let me just tweak this a little bit. So from here, I'll pre-comp this and I'll select leave all attributes in this comp. So the curvature will remain in this comp. So now jumping into that pre-comp, I'll paste my frog animation layer scale it up and I'll flip it horizontally, adjust it a little bit. Jumping back to the main comp, you could see it there. I'm just gonna add a nice feathered mask to this by double clicking on the square shape layer, increase the feather quite a bit. Add a Gaussian blur to it. And we got ourselves a nice reflection selling the animation that much more. Thanks for watching, here's our final result.